This last week was a pretty epic week for both Power BI and Alteryx. They both saw updates released with some significant changes to it. I'm going to start with Power BI and then go to Alteryx, but if you're only interested in the Alteryx portion of the update, click on the link in the description to this video and you'll be taken directly to that review. So the major release for Power BI this week was a feature called Report Page Tool Tips. It's a preview feature, so you have to go to the File menu, Options and Settings, Options, Preview Features, and then enable it in order to use it. When I first heard the name of this particular feature, I wasn't quite sure what to expect, uh, but the name does sort of reveal what it does. It is a tooltip feature, so if you hover over a particular point in a visual, you will get kind of what I think of as a sub-report or a sub-page pop-up. Now that page, the size of it is gonna depend on how big it was when you created it, and to support that, Power BI Desktop has a pre-built template that is designed for report pages, so it ends up being by default smaller and fits as a tooltip on the page. But you can create whatever visuals you want to have inside that tooltip. To tie it to a visual, there's two ways to do it. You can tie that tooltip to a particular field, or you can manually set it inside a visual. I'm going to do a video on that particular feature here pretty soon, so stay tuned for that. Don't forget to subscribe so you get the notification. The other feature is a bookmarking tool, and the bookmarks actually uh, were a preview feature, and now they're generally available, which means that you can use them in the Power BI service when you edit a report without having previously enabled them in the Power BI desktop, desktop app. You can now modify the display units and have more control over tables and matrices inside uh, Power BI Desktop, and that works on a per column or per field basis. So there's just a drop down list, lets you select which field you want to change and have control over, and you make your edits there. Another feature that I really liked and actually upvoted uh, and sent, told my colleagues that upvoted as well as we all thought the same thing was the ability to turn off the header in visuals when you publish it to the Power BI service. Sometimes that header would get in the way. It looks weird when when users hover over the actual visual, it pops up. Even if they have no intention of interacting with the header in any way, it still shows up there. So now you have the ability to turn off the headers. Uh, unfortunately, it's for the entire report, which is kind of a bummer because I would rather be able to control that on a per visual basis instead of have it apply it to every visual in the report because sometimes there are visuals that I do want to focus in on or click the ellipsis, the three dots, to be able to sort and, uh, and make other modifications to the visual. So I'm hoping maybe in a future update, uh, this is just a baby step and we'll, we'll get uh, the ability to do it per visual. The other thing I noticed when I used this feature is that I had to go into the file menu, go to options and uh, go to the options that were specific for this report, not the, not the overall options, and, um, and turn it on, save the report, close it, and then open it back up again, then publish. If I tried to publish, by just clicking the box uh, and not closing the report down and reopening it, it wasn't reflected in the Power BI service. I don't know if I did something wrong or if it was just weird the first time I did it, but um, I had to check the box, close the report, and reopen it again to make it work. There's also some improvements to the default placement of visuals. I know sometimes I get really annoyed when I click a, a slicer or a visual and it shows up in a weird place and I have to spend time uh, navigating and reorienting it to the way the report should be laid out. So hopefully that is, uh, is, is much improved and the default placement is a little bit better. There's always a number of custom visuals that come out with Power BI and uh, this month is no exception. There's uh, just a few that I wanted to focus on. The first one is the Timeline Visual by Cloud Scope, and it allows you to connect to social media, for example, Twitter, and pull in Twitter feed information for, we could say, the time a tweet was posted, if it was retweeted, the user's name, uh, their picture. Uh, all of that can show up and be configured in the visual, so in the visual itself. So that's how the timeline visual is designed to work. Uh, another one I really like is the R data table. 
I've used R in the past, uh, specifically the Shiny package, to create visuals. And uh, this data table works a lot like the Shiny data table does, where you can bring in fields. They're sortable. You can search in the columns to find values within the table. The table itself has pagination, so you don't have to scroll. You just page over to different parts of the table. Uh, sortable, filterable, all of that stuff is, is part of the R data table. It's a really, really great visual. Another one's the outliers detection, and it supports a number of different methods for detecting outliers. The two I'm going to call out are Z-score, because I'm familiar with the way that works, and Tucky's method, which uses interquartile range. But there are a number of other methods available and that uh, outlier detection visual. It also lets you visualize the data, of course, so you have scatter plots, box plots, density plots available in that visual. The last one I wanted to call out was a new dumbbell chart, which lets you display differences between two points in time for a category or series of data, uh, and that one's by Mac Software. There are some new connectivity options as well for SAP HANA now supports direct query uh, as well as support for the business warehouse in SAP. So for the AlterX updates, this is a major release and it has the release number 2018.1. So they're moving to quarterly updates at this point. And the licensing portal is now open and that has changed from the previous way that we used to get downloads and license the software. Uh, there used to just be a download page and we were emailed the licenses. Now the portal you go to is licenses.alterx.com. Again, the link will be in the description to this video so you can get to it from there. Major changes in this release are around the Promote platform and Connect. There's also some tool updates. So for the Promote platform, there's the ability to use the Deploy tool to upload models on the Promote platform. You can also score models using the Score tool on the Promote platform. And then you can also manage the Promote platform credentials using Alteryx Designer. A number of data sources have been added, which is always good news. So the Amazon Athena connection, Redshift Spectrum, my, uh, the Microsoft Excel binary file connection, Spark Direct, and the new Tableau hyper connection is available. In the Publish to Tableau server tool, you can check the option to publish as a hyper file. So those are all available as data sources and outputs now. For the tools themselves, the major one that I saw changes to was the filter tool. It's actually a little bit cleaner. It looks like a much fresher designed tool, a little bit easier to use. The expression editor is nice. There's some more date filtering and dynamic date options in that tool as well. Uh, and the input tool has better support for Excel features. Some other enhancements and really bug fixes that are in Alteryx Designer in this particular re release have to do with an issue when you used to drag and drop an allocate tool or even click on that tool. In the designer, there was a lag before you got control back of the, of the canvas. The ODBC queries would be erased when you updated the, the, the version from the old one to the new one, and that now has been fixed. You also have a little bit greater control over the containers, and one feature that I think is really nice is you can now disable the containers on the canvas rather than having to go over to the properties area and disable the canvas there. To coincide with Promote, there's also a number of things you can do inside the Connect platform. So you can now manage licenses from there, and there's some other management administration functions that are available in Designer uh, without having to go to the Connect platform. So that wraps up the my review of, uh, of news from both Power BI and Alteryx. As always, drop a comment, a like, let me know what you think, and subscribe to the channel for future updates. Thanks. Thank you.